MANIAC McGEE by Jerry Spinelli Chapter 5 Later on that first day, there was a commotion in the West End, at 803 Oriel Street to be exact, at the backyard of 803 Oriel to be exacter. This, of course, was the infamous address of Finsterwald. Kids stayed away from Finster Walls the way old people stay away from Saturday afternoon matinees at a two-dollar movie. And what would happen to a kid who didn't stay away? That was a question best left unanswered. Suffice it to say that occasionally, even today, if some poor, raggedy, nicotine-stained wretch is seen shuffling through town, word will spread that this once was a bright, happy, normal child who had the misfortune of blundering onto Finsterwall's property. That's why, if you valued your life, you never chased a ball into Finsterwall's backyard. Finsterwall's backyard was a graveyard of tennis balls and baseballs and footballs and frisbees and model airplanes and one-way boomerangs. That's why his front steps were the only unsat-on front steps in town, and why no paper kid would ever deliver there, and why no kid on a snow day would ever shovel that sidewalk, not for a zillion dollars. So it was late afternoon, and screams were coming from Finsterwalls. Who? What? Why? The screamer was a boy whose name is lost to us, for after this day he disappears from the pages of history. We believe he was about ten years old. Let's call him Arnold Jones. Arnold Jones was being hoisted in the air above Finsterwall's backyard fence. The hoisters were three or four high school kids. This was one of the things they did for fun. Arnold Jones had apparently forgotten one of the cardinal rules of survival in the West End. Never let yourself be near Finster Walls and high school kids at the same time. So there's Arnold Jones, held up by all these hands, flopping and kicking and shrieking like some poor Aztec human sacrifice about to be tossed off a pyramid. No, no, please, he pleads, please. So, of course, they do it. The high schoolers dump him into the yard, and now they back off no longer laughing, just watching, watching the back door of the house, the windows, the dark green shades. As for Arnold Jones, he climbs up the instant he hits the ground. He's on his knees now, all hunched and puckered. His eyes goggle at the back door, at the doorknob. He's paralyzed, a mouse in front of the yawning maw of a python. Now, after a minute or two of breathless silence, one of the high schooler thinks he hears something. He whispers, Listen. Another one hears it. A faint, tiny noise. A rattling. A chittering. A chattering. And getting louder. Yes! Chattering teeth. Arnold Jones's teeth. They're chattering like snare drums, and now, as if his mouth isn't big enough to hold the chatter, the rest of his body joins in. First, it's a buzz like trembling, then the shakes, and finally, it's as if every bone inside him is clamoring to get out. A high schooler squawks, He's got the Finster Wallies! Yeah! Yeah! they yell, and they stand there cheering and clapping. Years later, the high schoolers' accounts differ. One says the kid from nowhere hopped the fence, hopped it without ever laying a hand on it to boost himself over. Another says the kid just opened the back gate and strolled on in. Another swears it was a mirage, some sort of hallucination, possibly caused by evil emanations surrounding 803 Oriel Street. Real or not, they all saw the same kid not much bigger than Arnold Jones, raggedy, flap-soled sneakers, book in one hand. They saw him walk right up to Arnold, and they saw Arnold look up at him and faint dead away. Such a bad case of fencer wallies did Arnold have that his body kept shaking for half a minute after he conked out. The Phantom Samaritans 
stuck the book between his teeth, crouched down, hoisted Arnold Jones's limp carcass over his shoulder, and hauled him out of there like a sack of flour. Unfortunately, he chose to put Arnold down at the one spot in town as bad as Finsterwall's backyard, namely Finsterwall's front steps. When Arnold came to and discovered this, he took off like a horse fly from a swatter. And as the stupefied high schoolers were leaving the scene, they looked back. They saw the kid, cool times ten, stretch out on the forbidden steps and open his book to read.